Why won't you work? It's time to admit failure. And we're on the air. Um, I have built myself a Morse key. And um, there's a link to the video of the creation of this key down below. And it's built with parts from a hardware store. In this case, Bunnings in Sydney. But I'm sure you'll be able to find parts like this in, in a hardware store, wherever you are. So you, if you uh, want to start from the, the very beginning, um, you're going to need a key. So you can buy one. But it's, it's good fun to make stuff. So that's the key. Um, but down below, you'll also find links to the multi-part video series of the creation of the antenna that uh, I'm going to be transmitting on. And I have ordered a UBIT QRP transmitter kit. Before I build that kit, it's quite a complex kit for me at any rate, and I haven't built something for quite a while, so I wanted to get a little bit of home brewing under my belt, make sure that, that the actual soldering iron's working like it should, and that uh, I can still remember how to do all this stuff. So I'm building a very simple 3.5 megahertz receiver and a uh, 3.5 megahertz transmitter. So first step will be the receiver. And the receiver is the world's simplest SDR radio. So software defined radio. So basically it's about $20 worth of parts that plugs into the sound card on my computer and allows me to get to quite a reasonable amount of um, the spectrum for the, the 80 meter band, for the amateur 80 meter band. That's the plan, if it works. So. Um, credit where credit is due. Um, I will put a link below to the video that uh, Peter Parker, not Spider-Man, but he's, I guess he's the Spider-Man of the amateur world, you know, Cape Crusader. Uh, he uh, has amazing stuff on his site, a lot of inspiration that you can find. Uh, he, he's incessantly curious. And this uh, particular circuit, I will not put a copy of the actual schematic on, the, um, on my site because I think that uh, I'd like you to go and visit his site and watch his video first. Um, but what I have done is I've gone to the site which lists the software that he's used because it's software that he's, um, he's taken from another site and he's given credit to that site. So um, I will show you how to find that software online and it's loaded up, it, the video is about 13 years old so that's another thing I was worried about that it might not work on my computer because my computer is not a very old computer. Um, it's a fairly new sound card, so we'll have to find out whether this is actually going to work the way it should. Um, I have some other concerns too about the diode that I've used, whether it's germanium compatible. They say that it can be used in place of a germanium diode, but that doesn't mean it might work in this case as the mixer circuit that it needs to do. So all these things will be answered as I'm building. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put in the, in the information below link to the software, link to Peter Parker's um, video on this, um, all the part numbers, catalogue numbers for JCAR in Australia um, for the parts for this radio. And um, I will show you some of the things about the build now. Um, if you watch Peter Parker's video, I'm hoping that that will give you most of the information you need. But you still might have some questions if you're, if you're new to building uh, circuits. For instance, the um, connection to the sound card, the actual 3.5 millimeter jack, there's various different flavors of those jacks. So we need to make sure we wire that correctly. So that's something that I've had to do a little bit of research on and I'm hoping I don't blow up the sound card in my computer. Um, and I'd just like to say too that uh, if you do build this, um, I'm taking no responsibility for anything that goes wrong, okay? So this is down to you, your home brewing, you're plugging stuff into your computer. Good luck with that, I'm willing to take the risk. Um, I'll tell you what I've done and what works for me. It may not work for you and your sound card, et cetera, et cetera. But um, uh, we shall get on with it and I will show you the build as we go. And the other thing that he does is he builds his circuit ugly style, okay? And uh, I had kind of had an idea of how ugly style works. I've done a bit of wire wrapping, a bit of prototyping when I was a technician. But I'd never built this particular way. I'd built on variable, but not just on a piece of board, circuit board that's unetched. So I will show you how that all works out too and what the rationale behind that is too. So stick around and by the end of this, you might have a 3.5 megahertz receiver that'll receive CW, AM and SSB on the 3.5 megahertz band. And uh, it's about 20 bucks worth of parts. I think I spent about 40. I probably bought more than I needed, 
you, if you were willing to go into your junk box and look, you could probably do it for cheaper. Yeah, I think I, I ended up spending about $40 on parts. I bought more than I need, admittedly. So 30 to 40 bucks maybe now in today's prices. Still a bargain for a 3.5 megahertz receiver for the amateur band. Stick around. So when you build ugly style, you build on this circuit board material. It's double-sided with copper, and I'm assuming that it's, uh, I think it's fiberglass. But what I've done is I've chopped that off a bigger piece, okay? So you could probably get two or three circuits off this piece, so that's gonna be used for other things. And this is where the radio is going to be built, okay? So that is the circuit board where we're gonna put everything down when we build this circuit. So that's our a BNC connector coming into the circuit. And that is our RF choke, our 10 micro Henry RF choke that I showed you on this over here. So we're starting to put our components onto the, uh, onto the board. Now I'm starting to wonder whether the uh, Zener diode, so not the Zener diode, the Schottky diode that's recommended as a replacement for a germanium diode for rectifying signal is uh, as good a, a choice. Now, it's my understanding that this is a bare bone circuit and even changing the type of diode might be producing a drop in the amount of signal and it might be barely able to operate on the signal that's presently presented by a germanium diode. So that's my theory anyway. So what I did was the joys of scavenging. Now, boys and girls, this is a clock radio. In the olden days, before we had smartphones, people used to use these to wake up. So at the Australian Maritime College, when I used to wake up with a headache, and alone, as usual, because my sister was studying somewhere else and I was in Tasmania. I had this clock radio and inside it had some parts that I thought I might be able to use. So um, what I've done is I've gone in here and I've ripped out the parts that I have needed. So let's have a look inside the circuit and, you know, a little trip down memory lane of what radios used to look like in the olden days. Well, at least when I was a lot younger and I still had hair. Okay, so I've ripped it all out. It's got a seven segment LED display. That's the ferrite rod that's for the main tune circuit that tunes the, uh, for the, um, I think it's for the medium wave. And these little things here are what's known as IF transformers. This is what's known as a super heterodyne receiver, single conversion, and this is uh, the way that receivers were done for a very long time. They're still done this way. Um, quite often now it'll be a one chip radio, and it's a lot more simple, and of course we're going to software defined radio now as well a lot of the time. So um, the digital revolution is really truly happening. It's always nice to marry old with new, and I looked into this circuit and of course it had a really nice germanium diode for the rectification, most likely for maybe AM and FM, I'm not actually sure, but definitely for the AM section it was using a, a germanium diode so it looks like a glass diode, they also call it a glass diode, but anyway, ripped that out and I've put that in the circuit to see whether that improves things. And there it is, the total failure. I tried, you know, putting a little pre-amplifier in it and playing around with gain and whatnot, but Hey, I do have a Colpitz oscillator that works. So, beginnings of a transmitter, as soon as I get my license. What has happened? I tried HD SDR as well as the I2 PhD, and I think that's his call sign. It might be an Italian call sign, but 2 PhD, you, you probably need 2 PhDs to understand somewhere to find radio. But I'm going to continue trying to find out a lot more about it and trying to build something from the get-go was probably a big mistake. I should have probably done a lot more research and maybe started with something a lot simpler. But do I regret trying to build this radio? That's a very good question. The answer, and it's the honest answer, is no, I don't regret building this radio because um, what it allowed me to do was, I, looking at a lot of Peter VK, Three YE's videos I learned about how to ugly construct now that's not the actual circuit that he had because I've added so much to it to try and get it to work but all of that was practice at building 
ugly style, which is really rapid way of prototyping RF stuff that works and even you can use it permanently. You can mount this in a box and off it goes in, and you've got a receiver or a small transmitter. Um, I also found out about uh, mini kits from his um, site and from his information that he provides. He uses, quite often uses ceramic resonators for projects. So I organized some ceramic resonators and while I was at it, I needed some high voltage capacitors for the Ballon I'm building for the antenna, so that was beneficial. Yes, failed SDR radio is probably $40 worth of parts, but I'm going to put those parts to good use in another project. And like I said, it's been a very educational process and it's really reignited my interest in building things and, and being a nerd. So a big thank you to Peter. Um, like I said, links below to the software defined radio. Like he says in the comments just below the main section of the video, you probably should be building a kit rather than trying to do this now because sound cards have changed a lot in the last 10 years and it's very unlikely you're gonna be able to get it to work on a, a modern sound card or get a really, really old computer and you might be able to get it to, to do what he, he got it to do in the video. It's been a lot of fun. We're about to complete the antenna and I will end this video here, kill the suspense, the radio did not work for me. It obviously worked for Peter and it works for mono sound cards and, and whatnot. But like I said, it's been a great exercise. I don't find it, um, well, I do find it a little bit frustrating. I must admit, I did throw it across the room a couple of times, but I did learn a lot and I'm going to turn this failure into some form of success. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.